Hey there, Mike here. Thought we'd have a look at some of the new features in Unity Serializer version 0.84. Cool new features in this is it will store uh, textures and materials generated at runtime by your code, and it will also compress the size of the stored files to make them pretty small. So here it is running as it would have done uh, before. You can see the cubes are changing color. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and take that cube prefab and we're going to add a script to it. We're going to add this create texture script. And what that's going to do, we'll take a look at it in a second. And what that's going to do is basically either choose a reference texture or make one up on the fly. So let's have a look at that code. Here you can see it. You can see that uh, after two seconds, we're going to take a random value. There's an 80% chance that it will make a random texture out of two colors and a 20% chance it will use a reference texture. So let's see that running. Apply the change to the prefab. Uh, the, the cube from the scene. And we'll run that. As you can see, we're now getting some of the randomly generated textures. And in a second, yep, yeah, then there we've got a we've got the reference texture having popped up just over here. Okay, so now let's say we want to save that information. Let's get our cube prefab back in. Now if you've got a render on an object and therefore it has a materials collection, you will see that the wizard gets this, this new store materials button. If we click on that, it will add a store materials script to the cube. And this is going to store a number of different properties about the shader and the material. Now, it doesn't store all of them uh, that you can think of because they are made up by the developer and Unity provides no way of uh, enumerating the properties of a shader. But I've got a whole standard set and it deletes the ones that it can't find on the shader and you can just use this collection to make more. If you want to, basically, you need to give it a name and a type from this list of types. Uh, but it does have a whole lot of the standard ones built in and, uh, and they will vanish if they, the shader doesn't have that property. You may see some warnings in the log in the console about uh, things not having a property with a certain value and that's because it has to go and test for it, especially if you set the type to unknown uh, so you're not sure what it is, it's just a property, uh, it will go in there and, and do that. Uh, it'll just put some errors in there, it doesn't cause any harm. So we've applied that script, that store materials script, so let's set that on the prefab and then let's go and delete our cube. You can see that also in the hierarchy we get plus materials written next to it there. Anyway, let's uh, get rid of that and run the scene. Let's save the game there. You can see in the log now as well, so we can see how big in bytes the file is in, uh, in, that we're producing for this saved game. I'll just put a few more on there. And that'll do. And then load them back. As you can see, all the dynamically generated textures and the texture references come back perfectly. You've now got the ability to store lots of extra things and uh, make it even easier without having to write custom code to store your game. Hope that makes sense.